Hey guys, Jim here from Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. And hold on here a minute. <laughs> Let me get this uh, app working the way I want to have it working here, okay? I'm getting an echo. And I don't want that. So. Anyways, my picture looks pretty good. I'm going to set the phone over here because I don't have a clue what I'm doing. Scene one, Apple, take one. All right. Hey, guys, Jim here from Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. What I want to do today in this short video is I want to do a product review on a camera that we just got. Now, we've been looking uh, around for really good small compact cam cameras to help us when we're out fishing and hunting and we've we've used a lot of cameras in the past we've all we've used all types of these small field of view cameras but I think what we have found here is going to be our go-to camera for videoing and for a secondary camera when we're out in the woods or when we're on the boat fishing this is the Garmin Barb camera okay uh, it shoots in 1080 and 720p very good camera so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you all the different aspects of this camera and I, then you know after I do that and I show you some different video we'll go up in the studio and we'll diagnose this thing and I'll show you all the you know the, the, the insider things to the camera now the main thing that we look for has made me very unhappy with a lot of these uh, field of view cameras is the audio you know I've got probably four or five different ones and there's not a single one of them that has what I call good quality audio so far this camera I just tested it out a little bit last night it looks to me like it's gonna have really good quality audio now I've got this here on a selfie stick and it's about an arm's length away and I'm talking at my normal voice I usually talk at uh, my hearing at my age is not what it should be so I, t I tend to talk a little loud okay so uh, hopefully it's working good I won't know until I get in the studio and check it out but on the car over there I have my ca my phone on and I can hear the audio in the app that the phone has for this camera from about 20 feet away so it's working pretty good I think now that's one of the main things we look for in these cameras is the audio quality and I've watched a lot of guys out there on YouTube that have these type cameras and they buy these knockoffs and different cameras like that and, and, the, and the old saying you get what you pay for well it holds true because the audio on 90% of them cameras is junk and I'm just telling you the way it is. We're video producers. We have a whole team of guys that edit for us and, uh, and, and film and things like that. And the main thing we look for is quality in our audio. And also, the next thing I look for is I look for how the camera's video is, how it reacts to light situations, and also how it uh, focuses and how the white balance, the auto white balance changes. That's very important if you're gonna produce good looking quality videos. Now, the sun right now is where it should be when I'm filming, it's right there. Let's turn around into the sun and see what happens with this camera. Now I'm looking in the sun, I should be back a little, little bit, but this camera's working the way it should and I don't have any idea until I go up there and put it in the computer. Um, I don't have any idea what it looks like. But hopefully it's doing what it should do. So anyways, I'm going to do some different things out here, okay? I'm going to get in this boat, which is one boat that we use that we film out of all the time. I'm going to set the camera up in two different locations to see how it picks up audio from where I'm going to be filming from. I also want to look at the field of view and see if I can use this camera. Should I have to go out and film by myself? Can I use this camera to get a good picture for you, the audience, and also capture all the activity going around? And then I'm going to take 
and I'm gonna go and get in the, our bigger boat over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna put all this together and then I'm going to uh, show you the camera and film the actual different things that I like about the camera. Uh, there's a few things that I don't, I think they could be improved on, but all in all, this camera to me, for what we do, is better than most cameras out there. And trust me, we've tried a lot of them. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, I've got the camera all hooked up here and I've got it on the front of the boat. This is the position in this boat that I would be in if I was going to be crappy fishing or bass fishing, doing a lot of casting or, or, or tight lining while I'm using a jig over a brush pile or something like that. So but I, what I want to do is I want to get in here and see what how what the point of view uh, picture was going to be like, the point of view video. And I wanted to see how the audio was going to be with me in the front of the boat. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do is, I, I wish there was water out here, there's not. I don't think you can see it, but we got a little fish pond over there, but that ain't going to, that ain't going to do it. But anyways, I'm going to just um, take and show you some different things I do, and then this way it's going to show me how this camera's going to work for, for us when we're out filming, okay? Now this boat is set up so in the front, if I'm slow trolling over brush piles or something, I would normally have rods and a rod holder in these positions. All right, and I would also have some on this side, okay? And I'd use my trolling motor to slow move over the brush piles. So hopefully the camera's going to get that. But I want to be able to use this camera to show our viewers, you know, what's going out here, on out here. Not all the time a cameraman can be with me. Sometimes they have things going on. They're on vacation and other things like that. They might be out filming with, with, with a, another one of our members. And if I decide I want to go fishing, I don't have a cameraman, that's where a camera like this will come in really handy. And a lot of you guys, like I said, are, are self-videographers, uh, and you want to do the same thing. You want to have a good picture for your audience out there so they can see everything that's going on. That's what, that's what keeps them excited. You know, if, if I was going to be casting, I'd be casting out like so and reeling in. Hopefully, right over there, if I catch a fish, you'll be able to see it. Uh, I'm going to turn back away from the camera because that's another thing I'm really looking looking for right now is I want to see how the volume is when I'm back away from you. If it's not very good, I'm going to have to get a, an external mic. So anyways, if I'm out here fishing and talking to you, I'm just wondering how the volume is going to be, okay? How the volume is going to be uh, with my back to you. Oh, there's a fish right there. I wish. Anyways. I'll go up and I'll look at this a little later on, but as far as the volume goes, we've used a lot of different cameras, and there's a lot of guys out there that are using these different cameras, that the audio really is bad, okay? I've had video out there that I've used with some of the other cameras, and I'm not meant, trying not to mention any names because all these cameras have their good aspects, but you know, it's, it's, you pay, you get what you pay for, guys, that's, and that's just the way it is. Um, this camera really here is priced about the same price as some of your more expensive uh, field of view cameras, all right? But it has a lot better quality, a lot better features. Uh, one feature the camera does have is it allows you to control it on your cell phone. It works on both Android and iPhone. It has an app for either one. It's really a good app. I like it a lot better than some of our other apps for our other cameras. It's quick, it's fast, you can monitor the playback audio. The only thing I don't like about this camera, and I ordered it that way, it's not Garmin's fault, is I didn't get it with an LCD display. Because an LCD display for us is really not beneficial. I could set that camera up looking at it behind the camera in the LCD ex ex uh, display and hopefully I would have everything I thought would be right but then what happens I might cut my head off or something I would much rather look at it on my app alright and I'll show you a picture of this app I'd much rather look at it here while I'm sitting here looking at the camera and talking to the camera and setting the camera up just perfect so I get the perfect picture for the viewer and that's just one thing about the camera you know that I do like and one thing that I don't like but I ordered it that way for a reason so Anyways, I got the aspect on this smaller boat, which is a harder boat to fit to film on it because it's smaller. 
especially if you don't have field of view cameras, um, you know, and what I'm going to do now is go over to our big boat right there and try it. But this is how I would fish out of this boat, and this is how I would use this camera if I needed to do it without a cameraman. So let's go ahead, and we'll go over to the bigger boat over here, and we will get a little bit more video of the big boat. And then from that point, I'm going to break the camera down and show you a lot of different things that I like about the camera and show you a lot of aspects. One thing about this camera I do like, uh, before we go, before we switch over to the other boat, is the fact that it's good down to 160 feet. Now that's a long ways down, so we're going to be trying that out too. Uh, another thing, like I say, I, I, I like about the camera is it's got what they call G-metrics. And with the G-metrics, what that can do is it will it will show you your, your, your uh, pulse rate, it can show you the elevation, it can show you wind speed, uh, the speed of your boat or the speed of your bike or whatever you might be using it on. And that's a handy thing to have. It's not really for us, but one thing that is really handy for us, of course, is the Bluetooth application. Uh, so you can communicate with the camera, but also one thing that's excellent that I like about it is the fact that it has GPS. Right now, this camera is connected to the satellites up there. If I was to snap a picture or go back and check on this video right here, I could find out the exact location of where I am at any given time. Now, if I was on a good hole right here, and say I forgot to go and press the mark button on my depth finder so I could come back later on to this, this particular spot that I was catching a lot of crappies in it, or something like that, uh, I could go back and look at the GPS coordinates on my camera and from that point I could take them coordinate numbers, put them into my GPS and then go right back with my boat to that same location. So that's a really good plus. But anyhow, let's talk about audio just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and get in the big boat. As far as the audio goes, I did turn away a little bit and hopefully I'm speaking at my normal voice range. Hopefully it's, the audio hasn't dropped and you haven't lost the audio too bad. We use a lot of these wind socks. Some people call them cat's paws and cat's tails and things like that. And I'm sure you've seen them. They're a big fluffy thing that goes on your external mic. That will knock out 99% of your wind issues. Now I'm getting some wind right now. We're going to hopefully see what it does to the microphone. But if you don't use something like that, and I have and I, I've done videos and I've seen other guys that do that and the audio quality is really poor. The wind comes in and it completely knocks your audio out. The way to solve that is if you had an external mic, which you can get an accessory for this camera to do that, or another way you could do it is if it's gonna be an issue with this camera and I don't know if it is yet or not, I can cut a little piece of that or get some of that fluffy material like that and I can adhere it somehow over the microphone part of that camera and by doing so it will cut out a large percentage of the audio and wind issues and it just makes a whole lot better video and I've got videos out there I know guys who've got videos out there and it's terrible when you're watching the video you're getting interested in it and all of a sudden a gust of wind comes along he's trying to show you how he's doing something and you lose everything happens all the time and, and you know, we have forgot our uh, wind buffers before, and it's just something, you know, if you do and it's a windy situation, you make the mistake, and it's too late. You just have to do what you can do. But let's go ahead and get in the big boat, see what the picture looks like, see how it's going to film for us, and then we'll go upstairs and we'll take this baby apart and see uh, and show you some of the features of it, okay? Okay, guys, I'm in our larger center console boat right here. Now, this is a boat I would not normally fish out of the front. I'd be trolling uh, offshore for saltwater species of fish, or I'd be trolling for stripers, or drifting for catfish. I'd be using this boat. It's set up so I have a rod holder back here where I'd put my rods. And I can see from my picture here uh, on my Vibe camera that I'm getting a really good perspective of what's going on in the back. So, you know, if I was fishing out here and had a big catfish or striper, you'd be able to see all the action going on right here beside the boat and you'd be able to see how big he was and another thing i didn't mention when i was in the smaller boat that i like about it if you were to hold that fish up okay you get a real good aspect and you get a real good vision of what that fish really looks like so so far what i've seen everything i like about this camera is good now 
I've got the camera underneath the top right here and sometimes on some cameras it gets a little dark and it's hard to film so that's another thing I'm gonna watch for when I go up and check the video is how this camera is working filming out into the bright light and um, the picture looks really good on the phone it, it really does and with my battery I have with this camera let me mention that the battery lasts about two and a half hours which is pretty good they're not that expensive around 30 bucks or so you can get another battery pack and have a, a whole day of fishing on the camera and not run out uh, it takes a small SD card and a mini SD which is you know which is nice so it uh, it's just I like like what I'm seeing so far and I think you're gonna see us using this camera a lot more so I guess what I will do is I'll go ahead up in the studio and I'll start putting together this video and show you some clips from it some different things and you know you see in the picture how it's working I can't show you any actual on the water footage we don't have it yet but hopefully that'll be soon but I'm gonna just disassemble the camera and show you the different things show you the attachment that it comes with and um, you know a lot of you guys just starting out the camera is medium priced uh, this camera here was uh, $2.99 for a lot of you guys that's that's a lot of money but you know it look if you're gonna be making videos you want the best quality that you can get you want the best video that you can shoot because your viewers most of your viewers they look for that and if you've got potential sponsors and things like that that are looking at what you're doing you want to make sure they get the best quality video that they're gonna be looking at so they can see that you're not using uh, a, a cheaper brand of equipment or something like that so just remember that you may agree with me you may not but we've been doing this for probably 30 years um, so I mean we've done a lot of things videoing we've had a lot of different cameras in that length of time a lot of different cameras we've gone from standard definition 480 pixels all the way up to 4k where we are right now so, you know, we, we've, we've had a chance to experience a lot of different things in the filming industry. So just remember that and watch other guys' videos and see different cameras that they test and, and, you know, and just compare them and things like that. So let's go ahead up and I'll show you the camera's internal organ, organs and, you know, what I like about it, okay? Okay, now let's take a look at the accessory pack that comes with the, with the Garmin Vibe. Now this has just about every accessory that the videographer would like to have with this camera. Uh, this mount right here on the bottom of the camera has a sticky plate to it that you can mount to a windshield. Uh, it also comes with a curved uh, uh, sticky mount, I call it, which you can put on like a helmet or something like that. And just by simply twisting this little release clip you can put the camera on off and this will stay on permanent and another thing I'd like to say about the Garmin system is that all of their stuff is put together with screws it's not stuck together and glued or anything like that so if you had to get replacement parts they are put together with screws and uh, you can remove them and, and do different things if you had to now this attachment here doesn't come with the Garmin this is another attachment we have that we use for our other uh, field of vision cameras but it will work on this particular camera simply by unscrewing this mount right here I mean that and removing it and just simply by installing it here to the other mount and this mount right here is something you can get it at any of your box stores um, if I can get that thing in there you got to get it just right to get that screw through there but you can get this here at any of your box stores uh, this particular mount uh, particular uh, mount. And this is good for like if you had a bike handle or a pole that you wanted to mount your Vive camera to. Uh, a lot of you guys with center consoles, you have uh, a place where you can mount that and it fastens like so to your console. And it's movable up and down 
and you pick it up and you can move it you know left and right and it's got a 360 degree um, re you know revolution you know you can change you can put this camera any any way you would like to put it but that's basically the the, the accessory pack that comes with this camera uh, let's go ahead now and what I'll do is we'll I'll take and I'll open the camera up here and we will show you a little bit more about the inside of the camera. Uh, I've got it idling right now so um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. If you look at the top of the camera here um, you can see it has a very good display right here which will show you, I think I got it upside down, which will show you a battery uh, it'll, sh it'll show you that your GPS is connected to GPS satellites. Show the um, shows you the amount of time left on your SD card, and it also shows you the amount of pictures you have left on this. Um, so you know it has a very easy to read screen, and you can simply scroll through it just by pushing this button, and you can scroll through the different menus on the screen. Now, one thing I like really about this camera is it has a mode. Right now, it's in the standby mode. Now, if I wanted to start this camera up to record, all I would have to do is reach over here and you know leave the camera in standby mode and just push that switch, and that automatically, instantly puts it into record. And that camera right now, as you can see, it's changing digits and it is recording. That's how quickly that camera reacts. Compared to some of your other field of view cameras, it takes a few seconds for them to come on. But this camera, you can see, is almost instantly uh, how fast it, it'll go ahead and it will turn on. There's the switch, and you can see it's instantly recording, recording all the action that you're doing. So that's a very good feature that I like about the camera. To turn it off, all you simply have to do is push and hold the power button, and the camera will power down for you. Um, which you know is, is another feature you know everything on the camera works really quick and really fast so uh, that's that's really good um all right let me go ahead and let me open the camera up and like i said earlier this camera is built into a protective box okay the the camera and the waterproof case which is good to 165 feet, is built right up into the, uh, the camera box. So all you have to do to put your SD card in is just pull this little clip and open it, and the camera opens from the front like so. And as you can see, it's got a nice rubber seal around the camera, and everything, all your, everything is controlled from this point on. This is your actual camera. It has a, a, a long a really long playing battery, a long lasting battery, uh, lithium battery, and that's the battery right there. And when you get the camera, the first thing you'll do is want to charge that up. And that camera just simply slides and pushes, I mean that battery just simply slides and pushes right there into the camera. And the next thing you want to do is put your SD card in, and your SD card is kept right here. Okay, you have to use a high-speed SD card for this camera, which you should be using anyways, and this happens to be a 64 gigabyte right here, so we can keep a lot of, a lot of pictures and stuff on that card, and that just pushes in like most of your other cameras and plugs in. You got your lens, and that's basically it on this camera. It's self-contained, and the microphone and everything, you can see that the audio on the thing was really good. Simply all you got to do is close your door, lock it down, and you're waterproof down to 165 feet. The back of the camera looks like this. Now if you had the next one up, which is the Garmin Ultra, this happens to be the Vibe uh, XE, the Ultra will have a screen on the back, an LCD screen, and I, and I explained to you earlier why I didn't get the LCD screen. It just really didn't serve a very good purpose for what we wanted. Right here is the attachment that you would plug your accessories into, and that simply just snaps on. 
and snaps off. It's very quick. Uh, you can charge either through your computer or a USB transformer that you plug into the wall and it snaps into here if you have extra accessories like an external mic or things like that. All you have to do is just simply uh, snap it on and that's all there is to it. But that's about it. I mean, like I said, there's a lot of things I really, really like about this camera. There are very few things I don't like about the camera. And I think we probably will get a couple of these to use in our filming. And I think if you tried one of these, a lot of you guys would, uh, would really like them. So I hope you enjoyed this little product demo. I don't think I left anything out. Um, it's, you know, like I said, it's a really nice camera. The functions are on top. They're really easy to use. It's really easy to understand. Unlike a lot of your other cameras, they're not as easy to understand or they have the display on the back on an LCD screen, which is hard to see. So these are a user, uh, an easy user functionable camera. So anyways, I hope this helped you uh, decide what you might like to, you know, how, what, what route you might like to take next time when you're looking for a, a field of vision camera. Uh, this here uh, is also the camera on the specifications. It can go wide, it, you know, all the way up to ultra, light, ultra wide on the lens. So I don't really like the fisheye effect a lot because it makes things look out of proportion and makes things look unnatural for what we do. So I keep it on the wide which is the setting it was on when you saw the earlier video that we recorded. And I just like that setting better for doing what we're doing. It's more of a natural setting. Now, perhaps if you were skiing down a mountain or doing other things, you would want the, uh, the wide, the ultra wide uh, setting on the lens. But that's just what we like. Okay, we're going to get out of here. We're going to cut the video down, cut the video off, and uh, I hope this will help you decide next time, you know, you go and you buy a camera. This is the Garmin Vive XD. We like it, and we hope you'll try it out, and we hope you'll like it too. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, like this video, and share it, and please subscribe to our channel for more updates.